Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 5 of the chapter Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes. In this video, I am going to discuss the method of preparation of Hello Alkanes and Hello Arenes. We will be doing the first method of preparation that is preparation from alcohols for this video. So let us begin. You know alcohols are that class of compounds which have a general formula ROH where R is an alkyl group and OH is the functional group. And you already know that a functional group is that part of a compound which makes it reactive and it is that part which is responsible for the reaction of that compound because that is the most reactive part and that's why it is called the functional group, that group that performs the function. So the OH group of an alcohol that is replaced by a halogen and when this is done you can prepare haloalkanes from alcohols. So the OH group is replaced, is replaced by X where X stands for a halogen which can be chlorine, bromine, iodine on reaction with concentrated halogen and the hydrogen uh, chloride or hydrogen bromide whatever acid of the halogen or it can be prepared from phosphorus trihalide or phosphorus pentahalide and it can also be prepared from thionyl chloride that is SOCl2. Besides this as the furnishing of I mean, uh, sodium bromide or potassium iodide or potassium bromide can also act as the source of the bromine or the iodine which has to be exchanged instead of the acid, the hydrogen acid, you can use these also. So let us first understand the first technique that is the preparation of uh, haloalkane from alcohol with the help of an acid. And this acid is a, uh, is a halogen acid. So it can be prepared by passing dry HCl through a solution of alcohol or by heating a solution of alcohol in concentrated aqueous acid. Do you know when the reaction hydrochloric acid is very reactive but if the alcohol is also very reactive you can just pass dry HCl through it which both which would be very reactive and therefore it would be a quick immediate reaction. But when you do not have an alcohol which is as reactive, you need a, a, a kind of a catalyst which helps you to uh, carry out the substitution. This is, as you can see, it is a substitution reaction. It is a nucleophilic substitution reaction that occurs here. So if you have ROH, it reacts with HX, which is, uh, for example, HX can be HCl, it can be HBr. HCl or HBr in the presence of zinc chloride. Now what is the purpose of adding zinc chloride? Zinc chloride is added because zinc chloride helps in the breaking of the ROH bond. So it is a catalyst which is kind of going to activate the alcohol in order to make it easier for it to receive the halogen. That is the X negative or the nucleophile. So ZnCl2 helps in breaking up of the bond and it results in the formation of the resultant uh, result of this is reaction is formation of Rx that is the uh, alkyl halide and water is given out. Now this zinc chloride with the acid is used only for primary and secondary alcohols. This is not a method that is used for tertiary alcohols. So what are the exceptions we are understanding? It is used only for primary and secondary alcohols, which means primary and secondary alkyl halides can be prepared by this method, but tertiary alcohols cannot be prepared by this. Another thing, that this is a method which can be used to prepare, to give you the chlorides and bromides. It is not used for fluorides and iodides, and fluorides and iodides form the other two extremes. Fluorine is the, and the reason for this is that if you take the four uh, hydrogen acids, that is if you take HF, you take then HCl, HBr and HI. As you go down a group, like in the halogens, the size of the atom increases. And hydrogen, which is bound with each of these, has the same size. Therefore, the size of H fluorine is the smallest. So the bond length between hydrogen and fluorine would be the shortest. And the shorter a bond, the more difficult it is to break it. Therefore, in order to substitute the halogen to the alcohol or take the place of OH for the halogen, the HX bond must break. And in the case of HF, 
this bond enthalpy is very high and therefore it is not possible to just use zinc chloride and carry out this reaction therefore this reaction cannot be used to get a fluoride of the halogen or a halogen uh, or a halo uh, alkane or a fluoroalkane another example is hi another extreme in the uh, in the sequence if the bond length between hydrogen and fluorine was the least the bond length between hydrogen and iodine is the highest among the four now this bond length is so large that it is very easy for hi to break and it does not really need zinc chloride to help out with the reaction this would be a very pretty spontaneous it would happen on its own so there is no need of using zinc chloride if you're using the iodide so you have xcl uh, x is either cl or br and the alcohol is primary or secondary this mixture between HCl or the mixture of HCl and ZnCl2 it is known as the Lucas reagent so when you do your practicals you would go in for Lucas reagent whenever you're looking for Lucas reagent Lucas reagent is a mixture of HCl and zinc chloride now zinc chloride is not used for tertiary alcohols that is as it is the most reactive tertiary alcohols themselves are most reactive and it is the most reactive since when you have a nucleophilic substitution reaction first the uh, alcohol it gets protonated and the protonated alcohol forms a carbocation so the carbocation that is formed is the most stable in the case of a tertiary alcohol and since the carbocation is the most stable there is no need of using zinc chloride in that case so since its carbo carbocation is most stable, so its preparation is simply done by shaking concentrated HCl with the tertiary alcohol at room temperature. Put it in a flask, shake them together and you will get the uh, product. And there is no need of adding zinc chloride to it. This particular reaction is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. The nucleophile, which is X negative, it could be Cl negative, it could be Br negative, the nucleophile attacks the protonated alcohol with the expulsion of water. The, this is protonated, so H comes and attacks it first. So the protonated alcohol, now X negative, H positive, comes and attacks it and attaches itself to make a carbocation. The X negative now attacks that. And when the X negative attacks it, the H positive and the OH, they separate out because that's a good leaving group. It leaves easily. And the X negative, it attaches itself to it. And thereby the charge distribution is also such that ultimately it becomes the OH acquires the negative charge and H positive and OH negative, they form water. So the water leaves as a leaving group and you're left with the, with the halo LK. So... The nucleophile X negative attacks the protonated alcohol with the expulsion, that is expulsion is removal of water, which is a good leaving group. Another way to furnish, instead of using the acid, you could use an alkali metal with the, the, the L, what halide of an alkali metal. That would also be a good source of the halogen atom. So you could use ROH plus NABR in the presence of an acid, of course, and in order to make the reaction medium pretty reactive and you have sodium bromide in the presence of H2SO4 concentrated it will give you RBR, NaHSO4 plus water. Instead if you did not want to use sodium bromide you could also get a constant boiling mixture with HBr can be produced. A constant boiling mixture of HBr, 48% HBr mixture is used in the preparation of alkyl bromide. Alkyl bromide can also be, alkyl bromide can also be prepared by a 48% uh, constant boiling mixture of hydrogen bromide. Alkyl iodide is usually obtained by e heating the alcohol with sodium iodide or potassium iodide. Instead of using the HI as I told you, we will use sodium iodide or potassium iodide directly and with 95% of phosphoric acid. So these were, uh, this was the method, uh, one or two ways how you can prepare the uh, alkyl halides from alcohols. 
The next way how you can do it is, as I told you, that you can use uh, alkyl, uh, the hal halogen acid, you can use phosphorus trihalide or phosphorus pentahalide. So phosphorus trihalide and phosphorus pentahalide can also be used to give you the halo LK. For example, you have 3ROH, this, this is an alcohol, and PX3 phosphorus trihalide. X could be chlorine, it could be bromine, it could be iodine. So with PX3, it gives you R. 3RX, the three halogens would attach with the three alcoholic and they would substitute the OH and it will give you 3RX and the 3OH would combine with the phosphorus here to give you H. Now you have three hydrogens, three oxygens and three uh, and one phosphorus. So that gives you H3PO3 that is phosphoric acid. With phosphorus pentachloride, what are the products that you would get? The alcohol is ROH, make it react with P. Cl3, you get RCl, one of the, now you have five chlorines, one chlorine substitutes the OH, the OH goes here and it results in the formation of POCl3, that is phosphorus oxychloride, and now you're left with hydrogen and one chlorine. So one plus three, four chlorines used up, you're left with one chlorine and you're left with hydrogen. So you get HCl as the product here. So this is how you prepare it from PCl3, or sorry, phosphorus trihalides and phosphorus pentachlorides. Sometimes in the case of bromine or iodine, you can prepare this PBr3 or Pi3, the phosphorus tribromide or the phosphorus triiodide in situ. When we say you can prepare it in situ, it means in the reaction mixture itself, while the reaction has begun, one of these reactants is prepared in the reaction mixture. So what is done? You just take red phosphorus and you mix it with the halogen. It could be bromine, Br2 or it could be I2, iodine. That is bromine or iodine. In the mixture, reaction mixture itself, they would react and they would furnish PBr3 and Pi3 and the same reaction would take place. So alcohol would give you the halo LK. But in this case, both the PBr3 and Pi3 have been prepared in situ, that is in the reaction mixture. Then comes the last way how we can prepare the haloalkanes uh, from alcohol and that is by the use of thionyl chloride. ROH reacts with thionyl chloride that is SOCl2 to give you RCl plus SO2 plus HCl gas. This actually, although we are mentioning it in the end, this is actually the most desired method. The reason being that in this process, you get RCl, that is alkyl halide is obtained, but sulfur dioxide and HCl, the other products are gases. So if you really measure your reactants well, it is a reaction that takes place in one direction, that is you will, all of the reactant would be used up and you will be left with the product where two of the products are gaseous, so they escape. You are simply left with the RCl. So there is no need to carry out a separation process or a purification process from the products. Usually when a reaction takes place, you get a product, but the product along with it, it has other byproducts. Now those products, you have to separate this one from those. So that is one step which can be avoided in this case because both the products, other products are gaseous in nature. They would simply escape and you would be left with only the alkyl halide. This method now, this method, which, which method are we talking of? The method of preparation of haloalkanes and haloarenes from alcohols. Remember when I started, I said, let us see how do we prepare haloalkanes from alcohols. Haloarenes are not prepared from alcohols. The reason being, or rather, um, this method is not used for aryl halides or haloarenes. Why? Because in haloarenes, the C O H the CO bond has a partial double bond character. You would understand this uh, later when we uh, when we study these topics more in details. But the CO bond has a partial double bond character, and a double bond is always stronger than a single bond. Therefore, even if we tried using these methods, the bond between the alcohol and uh, sorry the alkyl group 
or the aryl group and oxygen has a partial double bond character it's a stronger friendship which cannot be broken therefore the substitution by the halogen in this case by the, these methods that is from alcohols is not possible so this method cannot be used for aryl halides because the co bond in phenols has a partial double bond character which makes it stronger and more difficult to break than a single bond so this was the first method of preparation of haloalkanes and that is the method uh, the preparation of haloalkanes from alcohols with this i'll wind up this video if you found it helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now